a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Shout with joy for Jacob, exalt at the head of the nations, proclaim your praise and say, The Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them from the ends of the earth, world, with the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those with child. They shall return as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to the brooks of water, on a level road, so that none shall stumble. For I am a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done great things for us. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheep. reading from the letters to the, to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. He is able to deal patiently with ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when God will call by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed death and brought life to life to the gospel. Hallelujah. Again, and it is becoming all too familiar, so much so that we seem to be immune to it. It's like watching too many violent movies on television after you've looked at about a thousand people shot. Uh, the effect kind of wears off. And therefore, you need more violence and more hatred and more outlandish things to tantalize you and to activate your imagination and your mind. 
That's the great danger of anything that is sensate. When you live at the sensate level, it becomes saturized. It's like taking a sponge and dipping it into the zinc. Fill it all up. Take the sponge out. And you say, well, maybe I can get some more water in it. No, it's saturated. That's why it's leaking. It can't hold anymore. And the same thing is true with the growing sensitivity and lack of any kind of moral and spiritual outrage. Yesterday, a Jewish synagogue witnessed a horrific act, an immoral act, an action that cries to the heavens. What is the word of the Lord for that? At last count, 11 people murdered many, many wounded critically and seriously, maybe for the rest of their life. Four of whom were police officers. While everyone else, understandably, was running out of the synagogue, the policemen were running to the danger in order to save lives. So the next time we hear this harangue about get rid of the police, or we don't want the police, please spare me that. Please spare us that, okay? Because, so it's very bold and very fashionable. I understand all that. It's all that background stuff that we hear. But those are the people that run to the danger while everyone else sensibly is getting away from the danger. And the individual who is responsible for this was motivated by anti-Semitism, hatred of the Jews, and indicated that all Jews must die as he opened up his uh, guns, his weapons, battle the police, himself wounded, uh, and taken into wherever they take these people, into custody. And this is not only a moment of great sadness and tragedy for the Jewish people, particularly for that synagogue in uh, Pittsburgh, it is also a moment of great sadness for Christians throughout the world because the Jewish people's suffering is our suffering. The rejection of the Jewish people is our rejection. The bigotry and the hatred extended to the Jewish people in a special way forges a bond with Christians, with Christians. That's why it's always, always sad and troubling when we see people who proclaim to be Christian and at the same time are either silent or complicit in hatred of Jews. I never understand that. Jesus Christ was a Jew, by the way. Granted, on, on his mother's side, but uh, he, was, he was a Jew. And with most people never consult, I never know why, because it's a magnificent resource initiated by Pope John Paul II, many years in the making. And it should be in every Catholic's home, by the way. And sections should be read every day. The Catechism of the Catholic Church Catechism of the Catholic Church. It's a magnificent volume. You so say, I don't understand this, I don't understand that. Get the Catechism and read it. 
That would be helpful. And if we open the Catechism to section 839, I don't like reading to you, but this is important. It's not long. Uh, the church and non-Christians. Those who have not yet received the gospel are related to the people of God in various ways. Related to the people of God in various ways. And the first entry is the relationship of the church with the Jewish people. When she delves into her own mystery, the church, the people of God, in the New Covenant, discovers her link with the Jewish people, to whom the Lord our God spoke first, spoke first. The Jewish faith, unlike other non-Christian religions, is already a response to God's revelation in the Old Covenant. To the Jews belong the sonship, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and of their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ. For the gifts and the call of God cannot be taken back. There is a spiritual ligament, a shared DNA, spiritual, between Christians and Jews that spans centuries and centuries, millennia and millennia. And therefore, there is a special connection between the Christian and the Jew. And anti-Semitism, anti-Jewish actions and rhetoric and feeling has absolutely no place, no place in the heart of a Christian and certainly not in the Christian churches. If we are honest, if we're honest, uh, the Catholic Church's history is filled with episodes of persecution of the Jews in Europe and in other places, even in this, uh, our own country. Persecution of the Jewish people. One of the greatest friends, Christian friends of the Jewish people, was Pope John Paul II. Growing up in Poland, many, many of his closest friends were Jewish. They went to each other's homes, prayed together. When he became Pope, one of the top priorities of John Paul was to further strengthen the spiritual bond. As he called when he met with the head rabbis in Jerusalem, Abraham is our elder brother. Abraham is our elder brother. And uh, he forged this because of the command of Christ that they all may be one as I and the Father and the Father in me, that they all may be one in us. And no one advanced this more than Pope John Paul II. And it, it would be hoped, it would be hoped, that today every church and every synagogue would speak to this need to their congregations, to their people. I have long given up looking to politicians for any of this kind of stuff. 
You turn on the television and the usual cast of suspects come flowing out. We need more mental health. We need more police. We need guns in the school. We need guns in the churches. Uh, we need more money. The list goes on and on and on. And they are totally useless. And it's useless because we're talking about a change of heart. We're talking about the spiritual reality because what we are fighting against, as St. Paul says, we are fighting against principalities and powers, not made of flesh and blood. We're fighting against them and we're believing that somehow man is able to be the answer to that which infects man. That's impossible. It requires a complete overhaul of the human heart. And there is no earthly surgeon that can give that heart transplant. That has to come from Almighty God. And it has to begin with each and every person. Each and every heart and individual open to that. In trying to forge those bonds. Our society has, in recent uh, decades really, become filled with a venomous rhetoric and hatred that has polluted the environment. I said it once before, you know, we have the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, and we're worried about smog and dirty water and all these other sorts of things. I'm worried about moral pollution. I'm worried about cultural pollution. What agency is there for that? Well, thank God it's not found in government. It's found in churches, it's found in homes, it's found in the synagogues, it's found in the various places where we live and move and witness every day. <coughs> the rhetoric has gotten far, far ahead of our ability to morally control and even to condemn it. Um, and and we're, we're seeing it. Um, this man who was arrested for these horrific acts, these affronts against mankind and against Almighty God. Uh, you know, on a deeper level, he's not the cause. He's a symptom. He's a symptom, not a cause. He's the symptom of a sickness of soul that is present in the world today. Not confined to the United States by any means. By any means. It's a sickness of spirit. That's, that's what it is. And he is just a sign of it. We have done our best in the last several decades, really the last several centuries. Culture and public life and people can do very well without oh my God. That, that's the secularization. That's the religion of secularization. We don't need God. We don't need the spiritual. All we need is enough material things. Grow the gross national product. Have more uh, exports than imports. Have full employment. 401k on the rise. On and on. That's all we need. It is a complete lie because it denies the spiritual and fundamental spiritual nature of the human person. And as long as that, we, we're overfed. We're overfed on the material. We're undernourished on the spiritual. And that's not working very well, frankly. It's not working well at all. And so, we have to ask, you know, more and more, the deep spiritual questions. Beginning with prayer. 
beginning with conversion of our own heart and our own lives. That, that is something that is much deeper. That's much more difficult. Uh, a difficult question for Christians and certainly for the Jewish people. Is there any room for prayer for the person who committed these acts? Is there any room for forgiveness of these people, of this person? That's a difficult sell. You say, well, that's impossible. You should get what he gets. Give him the death penalty. Lock him up and throw away the key. Get rid of the guy. Well, two examples stand out. Pope John Paul II went to the prison where Ali Aja, his attempted assassin, was in prison, met with him, forgave him, offered him the sacrament of reconciliation of penance. And in most reports, Ali Aja converted to Christianity and asked the Pope's forgiveness. The supreme example is right up there in your church. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Is that present? That's hard. Mm -hmm. Boy, is that hard. No? Think of the last time somebody offended you. Not, I forgive you. How long did it take you to really forgive that person? Maybe never. There are people who are still walking around with bruises from something that happened 40 years ago. How hard that is. And yet, the example of Christ and the most recent example of Pope John Paul II. The bullet came within milli inches of killing the Pope. One way this way or that way. And when they asked him about it, the Pope said, well, God's finger deflected the bullet. Only someone who is profoundly spiritual and believes in the hand of God could do such an action and offer such a response. And so today, I think the, the words of the responsorial song, and I'll end with this, are most important. Although they go forth weeping, Carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. God is close to the broken heart. Where is God in all of this? God is with those who weep and hearts are broken. We pray this morning for all those who are fatally wounded that they indeed will be received into the bosom of Abraham and brought to the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Jesus Christ. We pray that. And it ought not to escape attention, and I'll end with this. Uh, the, the temple, the synagogue that they chose to attack, <coughs> living tree a living tree temple became a place of death because you see if you take the word live l-i-v-e and you spell it backwards it spells evil and that's what evil is that which is opposed to life that which is opposed to life and they chose the occasion of a baby naming ceremony. A baby naming ceremony. 
We now call it soft targets. It's not a soft target because it will never be defeated. It will never be defeated because Almighty God always has the last word. Yesterday morning at 9 o'clock we had baptism. Mass at 7.45, we had baptisms, three baptisms yesterday. I imagine no one in the church thought somebody could bust in and start shooting and going berserk. <coughs> we don't think of those things. But they're becoming too much a part. But we need to fear not. For Almighty God walks before us and in back of us. And those who sow in sorrow will reap rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand. Hey.